I was recently asked a question. Because of the legal issues involved, would Forrest have hidden his treasure chest in Yellowstone National Park? The question goes beyond Yellowstone. The reason for the doubt about Yellowstone applies to every national park in the search area. It goes beyond national parks as well. The question covers each of the five types of public land that Forrest mentions on the map in the back of Too Far to Walk. But for the sake of simplicity, let's limit the conversation to Yellowstone. Would Forrest have hidden his treasure chest in Yellowstone National Park? That is a legitimate question, because hiding his treasure chest in Yellowstone could have brought legal problems to both Forrest, his family, and whoever happened to find the chest. However, that is not the question we should be asking. To find the answer to the question of where Forrest would be willing to hide his treasure chest, we have to ask a different question. And that question is, why did Forrest create the thrill of the chase in the first place? Answer that question, and you'll have an answer to whether Forrest would have hidden the treasure chest in Yellowstone. Some searchers believe that the thrill of the chase was about nothing more than a treasure hunt. Forrest was either bored, or he was concerned about his legacy, or maybe he was just a rich guy looking for a laugh. If the treasure hunt was just something to do to pass the time until he could think of something else to do, then I doubt that Forrest would have hidden the chest anywhere that might bring legal trouble to himself or to his family. Obviously, that includes Yellowstone. No matter how much Forrest was in love with Yellowstone, I do not think that he would have hidden the treasure chest there if the treasure hunt was just about a treasure hunt. Why take that risk? Except for the turquoise bracelet, Forrest didn't seem to have much of a connection to any of the items in the chest. And as far as I know, he didn't have a connection to the chest itself either. He may have liked it. It's a neat looking chest. But its purpose was to hold a treasure to which he had no connection. Unless there were unknown items in the chest that were of particular importance to Forrest, it was just a box of gold. Forrest said that he consulted with an attorney and asked about the legalities of hiding that box of gold on various different land types. If the treasure hunt was just a treasure hunt, then it is reasonable to assume that Forrest talked to an attorney for the purpose of figuring out the safest place, legally, to hide the treasure. So, Forrest walks into an attorney's office, says that he wants to create a treasure hunt on public land, and then asks the attorney to research different land types for him. In and of itself, that is a perfectly plausible scenario. The map in the back of Forrest's second memoir, Too Far to Walk, says that the treasure was hidden somewhere in the highlighted portion of the map. The highlighted portion of that map lists five different public land types. Those are the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, the National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, and Tribal. Of those five public land designations, the legally safest place to hide his chest would be on either Bureau of Land Management land or U.S. Forest Service land. If Forrest's goal was to find the legally safest place to hide a treasure on public land, one of those two land types was probably it. Yellowstone would be out of the picture. But I said that the question that we should be asking is, why did Forrest create a treasure hunt? Why create a treasure hunt at all? Those who think that the treasure hunt was just a treasure hunt will point to Forrest's standard reply to that question. To get families and kids away from their electronics and texting machines and out into nature. 
Another reason that Forrest mentioned was that he wanted to give people hope and something that they could believe in during rough economic times. Those two reasons plus the legal questions go hand in hand to rule out Yellowstone. Forrest did not have to hide the chest in Yellowstone to accomplish those goals, if those were, in fact, Forrest's goals. The problem is that, in order to believe the not-in-Yellowstone scenario, you have to ignore everything that Forrest ever said about the thrill of the chase and the treasure chest. And while giving people hope and getting families back out into nature may have been a bonus, I do not believe that either of those was the primary reason that Forrest created his treasure hunt. Okay then, if those were not the real reasons, then what were the real reasons? What do we know, and what can we derive about the reason that Forrest created the thrill of the chase and the treasure hunt? Well, we know that Forrest knew of the hiding spot before he decided to create the treasure hunt. We know that the hiding spot was a very special place to him. We know that Forrest said that he had an almost umbilical connection to it. And we know that there was no other place that Forrest ever considered hiding the treasure. I'm going to go on, but that really should be enough right there to dismiss any ideas that the thrill of the chase was just about a simple treasure hunt. There was one location, and only one location that Forrest ever considered hiding the treasure. Forrest knew about that location before he ever conceived of the treasure hunt. And Forrest had an almost umbilical connection to that location. To Forrest, the thrill of the chase wasn't really about a treasure hunt at all. It was about that special place. Without that location, there would be no treasure hunt. But, some may ask, what about the meeting with the attorney? Let me give a different interpretation of that meeting. Forrest was planning on hiding a treasure chest in a very specific location. He wasn't certain, but he thought that might bring about legal problems, and so he went looking for legal advice. The thing is, telling an attorney that you intend on doing something that is against the law, even if it is a minor law, is not covered under attorney-client privilege. Forrest could not just blurt out the location where he was planning on hiding the chest if there was any doubt in his mind that it might not be entirely legal. So to be safe, Forrest gave the attorney multiple land designations to research, and he hid the fact that he was only interested in one of them. Now, I am not saying that this is definitely what happened. Like the previous scenario, this is all just speculation. But it does fit better with everything else we know. Okay, what else do we know? We know that Forrest once said about his treasure hunt, I was going to make it work no matter what. I was going to make it work, no matter what. For a simple treasure hunt, a hunt that had to end at a predetermined location to which Forrest had an almost umbilical connection? Really? Forrest's three memoirs contain over 580 pages. He wrote over 250 scrapbooks. He answered countless questions over at Mysterious Writings. He was interviewed for radio, television, newspapers, and magazines. And he gave several 
long talks at New Mexico bookstores. And we are to believe that Forrest spent all of that time, money, and effort for a simple treasure hunt? Forrest was receiving hundreds of emails every single day from searchers. And he didn't just receive them, he read them. How do we know he read them? Because he kept complaining about them. Surely someone on Forrest's team told him that there were ways to safely file away most of those unwanted emails. The emails from bothersome searchers could have been automatically moved out of his inbox and safely stored away for later viewing if needed. Technically, Forrest did not have to keep reading every email, but he did. Forrest read every email just in case someone said something that he was waiting to hear. To be fair, Forrest may have just scanned through all the emails and may not have read every single word of every single email, but every email was, at a minimum, scanned. Even after 10 years and hundreds of thousands of emails, Forrest never gave up on searchers, even the annoying ones. Even the searchers who were looking in the wrong states. Even the searchers who were thorns in his side. Even the searchers who he could tell by the end that there was no way that they would ever find the chest. Forrest asked searchers multiple times to please stop sending so many emails. And I'm sure that most searchers respected Forrest's request. But some searchers would back off for maybe a month or two, and then they would be right back at it. And Forrest still kept reading their emails. Forrest kept reading every email, all the way up to the day he received that one email that he had been looking for for the previous 10 years. That's reading maybe a half million emails over a 10 year span, not missing a single one. And you're telling me that Forrest did all of that for a simple treasure hunt? I read somewhere that Forrest said that he didn't enjoy his creation anymore. He didn't enjoy the treasure hunt anymore. That was maybe 2017 or 2018. I forget. Who can blame him? Can you imagine having to read hundreds of emails every single day for years? Forrest's lark of a treasure hunt turned into a full-time job. But it gets worse. How could it get worse? But it gets worse. Searchers started showing up at his house uninvited. He had to call police on several of them. One searcher even broke into his house and was held at gunpoint until the police could come and cart him away. At least one searcher threatened his family and multiple searchers threatened Forrest. Yet Forrest still continued with the treasure hunt. And you're telling me that Forrest put up with all of that for a simple treasure hunt? I don't see how any serious searcher could believe that this was just about a treasure hunt. The thrill of the chase was not about a treasure hunt. The thrill of the chase was about that one location that was so special to Forrest. The treasure chest was merely a means to an end, and that end, Forrest's end game, had nothing to do with a box of gold. 
We don't have to know the full story to know that the thrill of the chase was about the location and not the chest. We just have to look at everything that Forrest said and everything that he went through to accomplish his goals. And the full story doesn't have to involve some grandiose, world-altering announcement. It could be just something simple and personal. I think William of Ockham would agree with that. So then, back to the original question. Would Forrest have hidden his treasure chest in Yellowstone? Of course he would have, and with zero hesitation. I was going to make it work no matter what. Forrest would have hidden his treasure chest under the Yellowstone Chief Ranger's parking spot if that was his special location. Besides, if the chest was hidden in Yellowstone, it's likely that they would make a deal with Forrest just to avoid copycats. Don't tell anyone that you hid the treasure in Yellowstone and We'll let you keep the gold, and we won't prosecute you. Judging from the response to other videos, I'm guessing that there are a few people who will downvote this video because they are either not fans of Yellowstone or their solution does not lead there. There seem to be several people with very strong opinions out there. Strong opinions are fine, Faulty reasoning is not. Acknowledging that Forrest would have no problems hiding his chest in Yellowstone does not automatically mean that it was hidden in Yellowstone. You can acknowledge that Yellowstone was not off limits to Forrest and at the same time have a solution outside of Yellowstone. My own solution is outside of Yellowstone. The purpose of this video was to illustrate that the thrill of the chase to Forrest had nothing to do with a box of gold. It had everything to do with that special location. In the end, Forrest hid the treasure chest wherever he wanted to hide the treasure chest, and the poem leads wherever the poem leads. Any potential legal issues surrounding the type of land that the treasure chest was sitting on are irrelevant for the purpose of determining that location. Thank you for watching.